CataractCoach.com. The problem of exposed flanges. These proline flanges can erode and extrude through the conjunctiva. Now, this is a case that was sent to us by Steve Saffron. He says this patient had a belt loop procedure done, and you can see the IOL is very much tilted back at a 45-degree angle all the way back into the vitreous. And if you look here, it's the iris is atonic and stuck at about 5 millimeters. And the superior iris has these translumination defects. And gonioscopic view shows that this iris is incarcerated into the sclera. Here are the extruding and exposed proline flanges coming through the conjunctiva. And the surrounding sclera has been thinned out now. So this is a problem. And so here's the patient now on the operating room table. You can see pars plana and fusion lines going inside here. And then that lens is really dangling back. The patient needs a good thorough vitrectomy as well. And grabbing that lens, bringing it up. And very carefully bring that existing lens up here. That's going to have to be expanded. Now, the proline flanges, the problem you have is, especially in this case, you see they're at 90 degrees perpendicular to the sclera. So just a simple poke in. And then if you see these blue nubbins under the conjunctiva, well, that's going to be an issue. They're going to erode. It's not going to last. So here is getting the lens up, putting some viscoelastic to protect the cornea. Get that lens. He's going to cut it in half. Could also do our twist and out technique, but taking this lens outside the eye. And then you can see as the pieces are coming out, that flange there was very loose. It really wasn't holding that lens haptic very well. So this belt loop procedure here, take a look how loose this is. It's really quite loose. Look at that. And so now he's going to cut off one nub in here, one flange, and then pull out the other one. And now you just got to leave that area of sclera alone. Let that heal up a little bit. Get the proline out of there. And then he's going to do a Yamane intrascleral haptic fixation. Now look at the angle of passing that 30-gauge needle. So it creates a scleral tunnel. It starts off very tangential to the surface of the sclera. So there's actually a longer scleral tunnel. And that's done on both sides. And now when these haptics are brought out, they are within the sclera for a good amount, at least a few millimeters. And now the little tiny flange that's created here is not left under the conjunctiva. It's pushed within the sclera. Notice here, you can't see the blue nubbin anymore of that haptic flange. Now to address the iris here, he's gonna pull it out of the incarcerated area, get that freed up, and you're gonna have to do some pupiloplasty in this case. Now this is a great case, and. You know what? Tomorrow's podcast is with Steve Safran. Dr. Safran in the podcast explains to us some of the pitfalls of doing just a straightforward belt loop procedure or even doing a Yamane and having those flanges become exposed. So he'll give you some great pearls in the podcast tomorrow, which will help you do a better job for your patients here. So now he's doing a pupiloplasty on the area of iris atrophy to close that up. That's the patient's superior. So it looks like Dr. Safran moved his chair, and now he's sitting superior, where at the beginning of the case, he was sitting temporally. And so now cutting that off, that's the fourth row pupiloplasty. That looks good. And now he's going to do um, a little bit of a, a few extra sutures here, a little bit like a purse string, and just a partial hemicirclage, if you will. And so this is a part of the iris that was atonic, and he'll do like four or five passes here through the pupil margin, or the iris margin, bring that out, and then again, do a fourth row pupiloplasty to carefully cinch that down. And so remember, with a blue-eyed patient like this, you want to obviously give them a functional benefit of reducing some of that glare effect. And you also want to have a good cosmetic effect because it's such a visible iris compared to a brown one when you're at conversation distance. So here's that suture going in, and now he's tying it within the eye, cinching it down, cutting it. That looks pretty good. Now he's going to use the diathermy just to do a little bit of a contouring of the iris and the pupil, just to make it more symmetric and round. And there's the end of the case, a beautiful result. Be sure to check out the podcast tomorrow. An amazing conversation with an outstanding surgeon. Wow, look at that post-op result. He'll tell you the secret to this in tomorrow's podcast. And by the way, check out cataractcoach.com, the website for our free PDF book about cataract surgery, the curriculum series so you can learn to be a better phaco surgeon, free daily email, and of course, all the social media stuff, plus, as we said, the podcast available everywhere. And tomorrow is Dr. Steve Safran on our podcast.